Hi guys, this is Jordan with Motion Array. Today, we're gonna to be looking at how to create a miniature effect inside of After Effects. The end result is gonna look something like this. But before we begin, I wanna make a bit of a disclaimer. You can technically get this effect with any type of footage, but there's two things in specific that will really help you get the best miniature effect possible. Number one is to shoot from a high angle. The whole idea is that you're trying to make it look like your regular side scene is miniature. So if you're making it look really small, looking from above really emphasizes the idea that you are actually larger than it. And number two, you need some perception of depth. Just a flat surface is gonna make it impossible to make things look small because you need things to compare against. But with that out of the way, let's dive into this tutorial. So here we are in After Effects and we have our footage that we wanna make look miniature. And this is what it looks like to start with. Pretty normal, but you can see here that we're already satisfying our first two rules, looking from a more top-down perspective and also having a lot of depth in the shot. So where do we start? The first thing you wanna do is to take your footage and drag it over the new composition button to create a new composition based on the parameters of your clip. Great. Now our next step is pretty simple. We're gonna blur out the entire image using a specific kind of blur, but we don't wanna apply this directly to our footage. Instead, we're gonna add it to an adjustment layer and work with that instead. Right click on your composition and select new adjustment layer. Now search in your effects panel for camera lens blur. This particular kind of blur is gonna help us get the best miniature effect possible. Now that you've applied it, you can change a whole bunch of different parameters, but you really only need to focus on a couple. The blur radius is the main parameter that you'll be working with. I'd suggest starting out with about 20, but feel free to increase and decrease it based on what your preference is. Right now, we're gunning for what you want the most blurry parts of your image to look like. Now go down to iris properties and shape, which basically tells you the shape of the bokeh that you're gonna have in the background. Really, you're telling After Effects how many theoretical blades you want your theoretical lens to have. The more blades, the more circular and delicious your bokeh will look. So we can see here that if we choose triangle, your bokeh will actually look like triangles. But you can play around and see what you personally like. For me, I'm going to choose the decagon to get the most circular bokeh possible. You can play around with all the other parameters, but there's really only two more that you really need to focus on. First, check the repeat edge pixels to get rid of the dark fringing around your image. And lastly, you need to choose your blur map. But we actually need to create our own first. So what is a blur map? Well, it's basically a way that you can tell After Effects to select parts of your image to either put in or out of focus. It does this by recognizing black and white. White being what you want to have the focus applied to and black being what you don't want to have it applied to. So to create our own blur map, add a solid layer. To do that, right click on your composition and select new solid and make sure that your solid is set to be colored white. Next, take this layer and pre-compose it, making sure to move your attributes. You should also name the new pre-composed layer to blur map so that you can easily select it for your blur map later on. Now double click on your blur map composition and we're gonna create the map. Choose your rectangle tool by selecting it or using the shortcut key Q. Stretch it out over the middle of your screen so that the strip covers about 60% of your image. Then go down to the parameters of your mask and invert it so that the black is in the center instead of the white. Great. Now go to the feather properties and increase it until you get a smaller portion that's solid black and a very gradual fall off to complete white. And now let's go back to our adjustment layer. Go to the effects section and let's select our blur map. Then make your blur map invisible by hitting the eye symbol here. And now we see the basis of our effect take shape. So here what we have is a thin section of the clip that's in focus and then a roll off to out of focus elements. And we can already see that this is starting to give the impression that everything is tiny. But why is that? Well, there's a lot of different elements that go into the reason, but a lot of it comes down to the fact that when you photograph objects, your depth of field is impacted a lot by how far away you're focused on. The farther away your focus, the wider your depth of field is actually spread out. But if you have the same aperture, but focus it closer to your camera, the depth of field becomes incredibly shallow. In reality, this scene is being filmed from at least 100 feet away. So the depth of field, even at a wide aperture like 2.0, still appears to have a lot in focus. But now what we've done is tried to manually make it look like the depth of field is much more shallow, which tricks your eyes into thinking that you're filming from only inches away. But we're not quite done yet. The basic effect is there, but we need to work on selling this a little bit more. The next thing that we want to do is take a look at the frame and see if what's in and out of focus actually makes sense. This will take some thinking and some trial and error. But here in our shot, we can see something right off the bat. Down at the center of this intersection is where we're making it look like the focus is centered on. 
But over here on the far right, we have a ledge that's way closer to the camera than say this car, but the ledge is way more in focus. It can break the illusion a little bit. This is gonna be difficult if your camera is in motion, but if it's locked down on a tripod, then you can move the blur map to account for this. We want this ledge to be more out of focus. So let's double click on our blur map and bring the right side in until we start to see it to select the edge here. We're just gonna estimate for now. Great, that actually helps out a lot. One more thing that we can see over here is the building to the left is being blurred out at the top, but really it's not farther away from the camera than some of the other elements that are in focus. So what we're gonna do is just manipulate the blur map again so that a little bit more of this building is in focus at the top, the same way that we just did it before. You can be as picky as you want with these things, but the more that you take into account what a real life situation would be like, the better your effect will end up looking. Now we're so close to being done. We've gotten the shallow depth of field, we've accounted for how the depth would be displayed in real life, but now we need to address speed. It's important to know how our mind treats certain objects. Basically, we think that big things carry a lot of mass, so they're slow to accelerate. Small things, on the other hand, can start and stop incredibly quickly because they don't have a lot of mass. If we want people to believe that these cars are small, we have to make them feel light in our mind. And one way to do that is by increasing their speed. You can do this a couple of different ways, but my preferred method is to right click on your clip and then go to time and enable time remapping. From there, you should be given two keyframes, one at the beginning of your clip and one at the end. Take the keyframe at the end and bring it closer to the beginning. If you move it halfway in between, you'll double your speed. What I'm going for is about three to four times normal speed. Now lastly, we're gonna really separate this world from the one that we actually know by dropping the composition frame rate below 24 frames per second. I'm gonna be going up to composition and composition settings and then dropping the frame rate to 15 frames per second. This will give our footage a slightly more stop motion type of feel. The same way that you would actually photograph miniatures or Legos if you're doing a stop motion animation. And now if we throw a quick color correction on, this is our final result. Guys, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, consider liking it, subscribing to our YouTube channel, or even sharing this video with a fellow video editor friend. You can also check out all of our other tutorials over at motionarray.com. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I can't wait to see you in the next video.